Hi everybody, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff's book, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in section 8.3 and this section is entitled Nouns of Confusing Gender. What that means is simply nouns which look like they're in one gender and in fact they're in another. And there are a couple of categories here. I'm just going to go through them for you. I've got some good news, though it's a little bit frustrating that uh, things shouldn't fit into the categories. Uh, there are some very easy ways of remembering uh, what nouns uh, are in this category. Shouldn't be too difficult for you to do it. So let's just get straight into it. We're in section 8.3. This is page 95. The first group of nouns of confusing gender are nouns like this one, prophetess which looks feminine, but is in fact masculine. Just look down with me. You'll notice that apart from the nominative and genitive singular, the endings of prophetes are exactly like the ending of our old friend, our care. Our care, our can, our cares, our care, our kai, our cas, our cone, our kais. Prophetes, declines very similarly, but it's different only in nominative and genitive singular. Prophetes, propheten, prophetu, propheter, prophetai, prophetas, propheton, prophetais. Now, um, there are a couple of hints for helping you to remember which nouns belong in this category. The first is, as Duff mentions, the type of noun which behaves like this is often nouns which denote a particular uh, group of people or a particular category of people. Prophetes, prophets, mathetes, disciples, uh, huperetes, servants. There are a couple of other examples. If you look in the vocab on page 97, I encourage you to grab that. Stratiotes, soldier, um, and so on and so forth. So you, you, that just a little bit of help just to get used to this category of person, soldier, servant, a disciple prophet that has the prophetess ending. There's a second hint which will allow you to spot what these, what, which uh, nouns belong in this category, and that's um, uh, found by recognizing that in a lexicon or a dictionary which gives you the meaning of Greek words, what uh, with nouns the form of the word that will be given you is the nominative singular. And then there will customarily be a comma and uh, a dash followed by the ending from the genitive singular. Now, this is something we've not mentioned before, but now is a good time to mention it because that's the information that you need to tell you what kind of noun it is. It turns out that with Greek nouns, if you know the form of the nominative singular, and the ending from the genitive singular, you can work out what gender and what declension it is. So with prophetess, for example, you'd see in a lexicon, lexicon, I don't want to say that word, you'd see prophetess dash u. And that tells you that this is the nominative singular form, that's the genitive singular ending. And because that's the genitive singular ending, you go, brruh, 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 that's a masculine genitive singular ending. That tells you that this is a masculine noun. Of course, you also know that s is not actually the ending from a feminine noun in the, in the nominative singular anyway. It's air. So that's what's going on with this one. Prophetess is a masculine noun that looks feminine. And it has this declension with... Uh, it differs from a normal, we think normal, feminine noun like our care, um, uh, just in the nominative and the genitive singular. Okay, on to the next category. Uh, just as there are what we think of as normal feminine nouns with an eta ending, there are also normal feminine nouns with an alpha ending, like hemera. Well, so also, these ones which are masculine but look feminine come in an eta form and an alpha form as well. And these two differ slightly from uh, the standard feminine endings. Uh, they're, they're actually slightly more rare than um, uh, these ones. Prophetess and Mathetes are obviously quite um, common uh, nouns if you think about um, the kinds of thing that um, uh, the New Testament is talking about, prophets and disciples. Uh, but there are a few words that decline like this. Eudas, Eudan, Euda, Euda. Notice again that in the nominative singular and the genitive singular, these differ from nouns 
like hair mirror. Okay, so hemera, hemoran, hemeras, hemera. Well, you das, you dan, you da, you da. Again, you're going to recognise this because in the lexicon it's going to be you das, comma, dash, alpha, which tells you that that's the genitive singular ending. That's going to be uh, unfamiliar. It's not like a normal feminine uh, noun uh, ending, which of course would be as, and therefore this must be a bit strange. Um, I, I honestly think that these are going to occur um, reason well they are going to occur re reasonably infrequently and it's quite a, a narrow range of words which do this you'll just get used to them so don't worry about that don't panic about that one thing you do need to remember about them of course is that you use articles and adjectives and so on that match with them in gender not in form it will be very tempting wouldn't it if you were writing profer ten for example like this, pro fair ten. Oh, <laughs> I learned to write. Come on, come on, Steve. Pro fair ten, the accusative singular form of pro fair tes. To write, if you wanted to write the prophet, it would be very tempting to write ten, wouldn't it? But that would be a mistake because although the endings match, the genders do not. This is masculine even though it looks feminine, confusing gender. Whereas this is feminine. We need the, fe the masculine article, which is of course ho ton. So it will be ton profetan, not ten profetan. Okay, so we've covered that. We've covered nouns like profetes, nouns like judas, the issue of matching, which you've seen. Uh, there are a couple of other things which uh, Duff calls attention to. This is section 8.3.2. There is a whole uh, well, a whole group. I say <laughs> there are three nouns which do change a colour for a moment. Precisely the opposite thing. Whereas these over here are masculine but look kind of like feminine, these over here are feminine but look masculine, and they look exactly like masculine. I haven't bothered to decline them because they are they decline exactly like logos in all cases and both numbers, singular and plural. So, hodos, way or path, eremos, wilderness or desert, aiguptos. They're all feminine, but they look masculine. Now, how are you going to remember this? Easy mnemonic for you, okay? Where did the Israelites come from? Oh, well, that's easy. They came on the road through the desert from Egypt. On the road through the desert from Egypt. On the hodos through the eremos from aiguptos. Those are the three feminine nouns that look masculine. And if you remember that little mnemonic, on the road from Egypt, so on the road through the wilderness from Egypt, in whichever order you want to remember it, then that will help you to uh, remember which three nouns belong in that category, which is going to be important when you're doing the exercises and doing stuff later on. Okay, one final point. This is relating to section 8.3.4. Duff here introduces um, or perhaps reminds us of some traditional terminology to categorise the different patterns of nouns and verbs that we have seen so far. If you just look at the table at the bottom of page 96, this is quite helpful. So far we've seen nouns like logos, we've seen nouns like arcan, or arche, sorry, um, and we've seen nouns like ergon, uh, and we've also seen nouns that are a little bit like um, uh, uh, look, sorry, I've seen the nouns we just looked at here. Now, the, there's a, there are um, uh, traditional ways of categorising those patterns of endings. A pattern of endings for a, a noun in uh, any language is called a declension. And the first and second declensions come in, uh, with one exception, in uh, masculine, feminine uh, and neuter forms. And if you want the technical terms for what declensions we've been learning, you can find them here. Let me just explain what the table means. Masculine nouns in the first declension are nouns like this, prophetess. This pattern of endings is the first declension. It's not the easiest one to learn, at least it's not in the order that we've learned it, but it's numbered the first masculine declension. Feminine nouns in the first declension are nouns like this. You see, they have almost the same pattern. Air, S, so air, N, S, air, I, S, own, ice. Our care, 
has almost the same pattern as profetess, and therefore it's put in the same declension. It's categorized in that way. Feminine nouns of the first declension are nouns like our care. Neuter nouns of the first declension, there aren't any. There aren't any neuter nouns which follow this pattern of endings. The second declension, well, the second declension is nouns like logos. Just remind you of that. Logos. Logon, logu, logo, logoi, logus, logo, logu, logois. Um, that's the first, the, the second, sorry, declension, the second pattern of noun endings. And as we've seen, there are some feminine nouns which follow that pattern of endings. These ones, hodos, eremos, and iguptos. So those are also said to be in the second declension, the second pattern of noun endings. Finally, there are neuter nouns in the second declension, the second pattern of noun endings. They're neuter nouns like ergon, which, though not exactly the same uh, in pattern in the, the pattern of endings as logos, are pretty similar. So apart from the nominative singular and the nominative plural, you remember, the nouns are the same. So logos, ergon... Uh, not, not quite the same, they're almost the same. <laughs> Logos and ergon is a nominative singular, but apart from that in the singular they're the same. Ergon, ergu, ergo. Then in the plural you've got differences in the nominative and accusative plural. Erga, erga. But then again when you get into genitive and dative, ergon has the same pattern as Logos. So it's said to be in the same declension, the second declension, the same pattern of endings as Ergon. That's what that table means at the bottom of page 97. Now, uh, Duff reckons that it's more in intuitive to think of them as normal nouns and not so normal nouns and to group them slightly differently. That's what the uh, uh, table suggests at the top of page 97, where what we think of as normal nouns in the pattern in which we've been learning them are nouns like logos, nouns like uh, uh, arcare, and nouns like ergon, and then there are slightly weird ones, where there are masculine ones that look like this, and there are feminine ones which look like this, and there aren't any weird neutral ones yet. Now if you prefer to think of them in that way, that's fine, but as Duff points out, occasionally it's helpful to know what somebody's talking about when they say, what's a feminine noun of the second declension? You might like to know that, and here on page 96 is all the information you need to get your head around that. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Um, at this stage, we have got to the end, woohoo, of all of the uh, stuff in this chapter. Quite a short chapter, chapter 8. But we're going to go on in the next video to look at some example exercises, um, which will help to ingrain some of the stuff you've learned uh, in this chapter and in the previous chapter. So stick with it. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. Don't give up. Keep plowing on and we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Okay, God bless and bye.